Over the past year, if you had asked me what my favorite laser diode machine was and what I usually would recommend to most people, I would have said the X-Tool D1. I might have a new recommendation and that is because X-Tool has come out with an updated version of the X-Tool D1, the D1 Pro, and this guy is the big reason, the 20 watt laser module. All right, welcome back to the shop. My name is Brandon and I get to play around with all of these really fun lasers, 3D printers and CNC's and recommend the best ones to you. So this is the X-Tool D1 Pro. They have three different versions, a five watt, a 10 watt and a 20 watt version where the only thing that changes is the actual laser module. This is the 20 watt version. And as of right now, this is the most powerful laser module you can get. 20 watts is the top end. The only other one I've seen that is that powerful is the Atom Stack X20 Pro. And I did a full review of that one up there and we'll get into my pick between those two at the very end. So the first thing you probably noticed right off the bat was the change in color. They have this like Iron Man red and gold color scheme versus the gray they had before. This looks really nice on top of the aluminum plate. And that's always been one of my favorite parts about this machine is the overall build. So these are pretty beefy aluminum plates. They have all throughout the assembly. The only mechanical parts that aren't aluminum are these rails and the wheels that roll across them and those are steel. That's a big upgrade over other machines as well. Sometimes these are even plastic, sometimes they're aluminum, but since they're steel they're claiming that they can run a really long time. I think like 100,000 runs or whatever that means is what they're putting in their marketing. But I can say from using just the standard D1 these are great and they definitely hold up. Now another nice thing I like about the assembly is how you can tighten the belts. The belts on either side of the y-axis as well as the one on the x-axis can definitely loosen up over time, especially if you're in a garage and you have a bunch of different temperatures. Like here, it's 100 in the summer and it can drop below freezing in the winter. So you have to retighten them. And that sometimes is a big pain, but they do a great job. There is just a screw on the very back. You tighten that screw and it pulls the entire back of this assembly back or forward, depending on the direction. So that's on both sides. And just from a maintenance side of things, that is great. Now, if you're coming to this wondering, all right, what's the big difference between this and this, the standard D1? There's three big differences other than the price and the color. The first is the addition of limit switches. And that was one of my cons from earlier. And they have them on both the front and the back of the Y axis, as well as the left and the right of the X axis. Limit switches are great because they allow you to find your home position. So if you're doing repeat cuts and maybe you lose power between those cuts, you can always find the original home and then get back to where you started. They're also nice because they're kind of like bumpers when you're bowling. So if you were to jog this machine too far before, it would just ram into the edge and the stepper motor would grind and it wouldn't be great for your machine overall. So now instead, if you hit one of those limit switches, the alarm's going off so you know that you are at the edge. So some limit switches are a literal switch. So it hits the edge, this triggers, and the machine can register that it's hit the end. This one works a little bit different. I think it's a proximity sensor because I have a little bracket attached to the ends. And then on the gantry is the electronics for the switch. So then once the switch gets to the bracket, the proximity switch triggers. And so it knows it's at the end. That's nice because these are pretty easy to crush. I've definitely replaced a ton of these on CNC's in the past. They're cheap, so they're not expensive, but it's just annoying. This is going to be really hard to mess up, so I love that they've added this. And also with most other laser diodes, you really only have limit switches for one of the corners, so it's usually either the front left or the front back. They have them on both sides of both the axis, so it's keeping you from hitting all four corners versus just your main home position, and that's really nice as well. Now their second big upgrade is in the electronics. In their marketing, they're claiming they've updated their algorithm, which means this can run a lot faster. So the max speed of the original D1 was around 9,600 millimeters per minute. This one they're claiming is 24,000 millimeters per minute. Now here's a quick engrave of me running it at that speed at full power. And while the 24,000 number is great, really practically, it's not going to come into play a ton. And you're going to see that when we do our test file here in a minute. And then also when you're doing your engrave, you're having to start and you're having to stop. So you've got that acceleration. So you never really hit top speed anyway, especially if you're working in a pretty small area. But just knowing that you can run it that high, you definitely will see some time savings. And the big reason for that isn't just the speed, but it is our third big improvement, the 20 watt laser diode. Now this guy, you can actually buy individually. I think it's around 600 bucks. So if you have an original D1, you can get the increase in power. You're just gonna miss out on the limit switches and the increase in speed and obviously the color for the D1 Pro. 
But these 20 watt laser diodes are chunky. Right here you can see comparison between the 10 watt and the 20 watt. These things are just massive. And that video is actually a pre-production unit of this module. The one big thing that one didn't have was the integrated air assist attachment already built in. So that's nice to see that this is pretty much good to go. You do have to buy the compressor separate, but if you have it, you can connect it right up. Now these laser diodes are getting pretty crazy because to get these increased wattages, you are having to add multiple laser diodes because the max power of a laser diode is around five and a half watts. So to get the 20 watts, they have four individual laser diodes on the inside, they get focused through the lens and they're coming out the bottom. I can't wait to see what the next step is. They basically have been doubling over the past year and a half. So are we gonna see a 40 watt laser diode? And if that's the case, that's like the low end of a CO2 machine. So things get really interesting at that point because for the most part, a diode laser is pretty easy to move around. You're not really having to worry about water cooling or anything like that. But a lot of them also don't currently come with enclosures like a CO2 unit does. Now, a couple of the things about the diode isn't just the laser beam itself, but just in how they focus it. So they still have my favorite way to focus a laser, and that is this little guy on the side that drops down. And then you have a lever on the other side, and you can just drop this up and down to where this guy hits your material and you're focused. But then they also have this fine adjustment guy right here, which if I pull this lever, this is going to move by six millimeters. And the reason for that is if you are going to be cutting out thicker material, basically the focus point of your laser beam, you're gonna to wanna to need to drop as well. So you're focusing towards the middle of the material, or if you're doing multiple passes, you can drop it down in the middle of the cut. So this gives you a range of zero to six millimeters. And that's corresponding to the thickness of your material. And with all of their laser modules, they've been doing a good job of adding in this coated acrylic that's gonna protect your eyes from the laser diode. But then they also are starting to play around with the airflow of the air assist. So you can kind of see there is a slope right here. And the idea behind that is to get the debris that you are creating when you're engraving or cutting out of this laser diode enclosure. CO2 so lasers, they're usually open, so you have a little bit better airflow. But with these, since they're also trying to protect your eyes, being able to get this out quicker is better, so you don't get all that soot and nasty stuff on the inside. Now, one thing to keep in mind as we're going through this review, while this does support air assist, it doesn't come with the compressor. And I've actually lost my compressor, so none of my tests I am doing with the air assist attached. So now when you see my engraves and cuts, if you add in an air assist, they're gonna look even cleaner and they're gonna get a little bit better performance. Now there are some trade-offs with the increased power of the 20 watts. The major being that you're gonna get a little bit thicker laser dot. So for the 20 watt, they're listing this out as 0 0.08 by 0 0.10 millimeters. That's compared to their upgraded 10 and five watt laser modules that are going to be 0 0.08 by 0 0.0 six. And those are a tad bit smaller than the 10 watt module that you currently will find with just the standard D1. And it does look like they've made some upgrades to the five and the 10 watt laser module itself as well with the D1 Pro. Now, once you focus this down, you're gonna have about two inches of the max thickness that you can use to engrave and or cut. And if you're looking at this right now, you're like, well, this is a lot thicker than two inches. And that's because I've got this set up on a couple risers just to get the machine up higher. And then especially if you're going to be using their new rotary, you're gonna be able able to get this machine higher. There are a two I've done a review of as well, and that is right up there. So this is actually on two risers, so you can take this down one level. And the package they sent me came with the risers, which are really easy to install and works great. Now, another difference between the 20 watt and then the 10 and the five watt version of this machine is with your overall work area. So the 10 and the five watt, you're looking at 430 by 400 millimeters. And then the 20 watt, you're looking at 430 by 390 millimeters. So you're losing some engrave area in your Y direction. And that is because this is a thicker laser diode. So this is going to run into the end a lot sooner than the five and the 10 watt laser module, but you're only losing that 10 millimeters or 0.4 inches. Now on the connection side of things, you've got three options. One is USB here on the side, which every single laser diode I've seen supports. Then you also have the ability to add a TF card, which is like just a little tiny memory card into the motherboard itself. So you can export your file from their software or from something like Lightburn and then run it directly from the machine. If you don't want to be connected to the computer and or you don't want to be connected over Wi-Fi. So 
this has a Wi-Fi antenna on it and it can connect to Wi-Fi as well. And then on the software side of things, this is pretty much gonna support everything out there. The big ones being Lightburn, which is my favorite. And Lightburn's what I'm gonna be using to run all of these test files. But then they have built their own software, the Xtool Creative Space, which has come leaps and bounds over what it originally was when it first reviewed this machine. And you can actually use that software with their other machines, like the Xtool M1, their combination laser diode vinyl cutter, which I did a review of as well, right up there. And then their bigger CO2 machine, which is like a Glowforge competitor, which I also did a review of right up there. I've done a review of pretty much anything Xtool has put out. But for the most part, I wind up using Lightburn just because there are some settings that I like to tweak. But the Xtool Creative Space really will do pretty much anything that you need for doing actual projects. It's very easy to use. It doesn't cost anything. So if you're picking up one of these units, I definitely would recommend starting out there to get your feet wet. And then you can check out the trial for Lightburn if you want to upgrade and see if that's going to be a better fit for you. Okay, so let's talk about safety. There are two big safety features this has other than this coated acrylic that helps you protect your eyes. In general safety, you always want to be wearing safety glasses they provide. That's going to protect you from the light coming from this machine. And you want to be in a well-ventilated area because this has no enclosure. But they also add in a flame detection, which I've had trigger a couple times on me because again, I don't have air assist. So it's pretty easy for me to have this flames pop up. The machine will stop, the laser gets killed, and you're going to get an alarm that you have to hit this button to reset it and get going again. But then it also has tilt detection, which a lot of these machines have, especially if this gets picked up, then that laser is going all over the place. It's automatically going to kill that laser beam and the alarm's going to go off as well. The tilt detection is pretty standard and the flame detection is becoming a lot more standard, which is great because that is probably the biggest drawback of these machines is just the overall fact they could light on fire. So you always need to be with them and watching them, even though it has that infrared sensor where it's checking for flames. Okay, so let's get into some tests. And this is the test file that I pretty much use on every single machine that I've got. And if you wanna use this file on your machine, there is a link down in the description. What I really like about these is not only can you see what the performance of the machine is, but depending on your machine and your material, the right speed and power settings are going to be different. So this really gives you the ability to figure out where is your sweet spot. So with this engraved test file, you can see that we are going all the way through the material at a thousand millimeters per second at 70 all the way up to 100% power. And with engraving, we're not trying to go through the material, but probably the most obvious change is with the actual cutting test file. So with the 10 watt, the max speed that we could get a cut was 200 millimeters per minute. So pretty slow versus this guy, which was 500 millimeters per minute. And I had to stop this running because I did get a flame right here into the machine shut off. So it didn't have a chance to put in the labels, but this is 500 millimeters per minute at both a 90 percent and 100 percent power and this is getting a cut in one pass for three millimeters birch plywood so a big improvement versus the 10 watt and for more of an apples comparison here is the atom stack x20 pro that test file now i was using air assist with the atom stack x20 pro so i was getting a cleaner cut especially when it's cutting all the way through at high power so you can definitely attribute the better performance to that i was seeing pretty similar performance with the test module they sent me earlier to the atom stack x20 so if you're looking at both machines know that for the most part the laser modules are going to perform about the same and when you compare it to a 10 watt, they really are going to be twice as powerful, which means you also can run them potentially twice as fast. And then I did a quick engrave with the birch plywood as well of an R2-D2, and you're getting good results like you would expect. Now, a few other tests that I did was with acrylic. Now, you basically can't cut anything clear with a diode laser, but this acrylic does a really nice job. And cutting acrylic with a laser, whether it's a CO2 laser or a diode laser, is one of my favorite things, especially with cast acrylic, which really is made for lasers. You get a really clean edge and a really nice Cut. And one of the things they had on their website was the fact that you could get color engravings on top of metal. But you can see I was getting marking onto metal, which is nice. I wasn't able to get quite the results that they did, but you could potentially get there. Just know it's going to be pretty finicky. And even when I did a review of a MOPA fiber laser, which one of the benefits of those is you can get those color engravings, those colors are really going to be dependent on the angle that you look at. So that effect really isn't going to be as impactful as it might look just in the picture that they provide. And then the one last test that I did was cutting out something thick. 
So I had a half inch thick board of poplar, which is a really soft hardwood, and I was able to cut all the way through. I did not even try doing this in one pass because I didn't want to drop the speed way down because I didn't have air assist. So I ran a lot of passes, but I ran them quick, but you can see it steadily did go further and further down till I cut all the way through. I'm gonna do some further tests of thicker material, but that are softer. So like basswood, which is the one they advertise in just one pass to see what the results would be. But just know when you are doing one pass, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna get some charring on the bottom. So you'll want to have some good airflow as a result. So I do have this honeycomb bed that they provide as an accessory, which gives me good airflow. But even with that, when you're running at low speeds, you probably will get some charring. Okay, so you're looking at this versus the standard D1. How do they compare? Again, you got those three big improvements. One is the limit switches, two is the increase in speed, so 96,000 all the way up to 24,000, and then obviously the increase in power, so from 10 watt max all the way up to 20 watt max. But in terms of price, this is going to be $250 more than the standard D1. And if you were just looking at buying a D1 and then buying the 20 watt module, this 20 watt module is five to $600, so it would just make more sense to buy the Pro from the beginning. But if you don't need the 20 watts, the 10 watt machine does get pretty close to the standard D1. And you really would need to see if the increase in speed and those limit switches are going to be worth it for you. And normally I really don't run my machines over 10,000 millimeters per minute. One thing you have to run the laser at a really high power to be able to get marking, even with 20 watts. And then also you're gonna get a little bit of a wobble and a shake as it goes to higher speeds. Even though this is a nice frame, you still are gonna have some movement to it when this is moving. So the 10 watt option of the Pro or just the standard D1 could be good for you. But where this really gets interesting is comparing this to the Atomstack X20 Pro, which we have been talking about. Overall, the laser portion of the machine is going to be the same. The D1 Pro, it is a little bit easier to focus, as well as making those micro adjustments for cutting. And overall, I like the build quality of the D1 over the Atomstack. Although the Atomstack isn't bad at all, it will get the job done. And probably the biggest difference is the speed. So the Atomstack maxes out at 12,000 millimeters per minute. And again, this is 24. And now on the atom sack side of things, it does have several things going for it. Probably the biggest is it comes with a compressor. So if you wanted to add air assist to this unit, that's going to be an additional $150 purchase versus the atom stack, which is already built in. And the atom stack also has a touch screen that is built directly into the unit and you can run files directly from it as well as jog the machine around. If you want to control the machine at all with the D1, you'll have to plug it into a computer or connect over Wi-Fi because the only thing you really can do is just run a file directly off of the memory card. And then looking at the price between the two units, Atomstack is actually a little bit cheaper. Right now, it's about 70 bucks cheaper. But if you add in the fact that it also comes with a compressor, you're looking at more than $200 in savings that you could potentially get. Now, if you wanted my recommendation, I still probably would lean towards this just because of the build quality. It just feels nicer and I enjoy using it. Also, it comes with their software, so that's not an additional purchase you might need to make with the other systems. And that has come leaps and bounds from where it was originally. But I would love to know what you guys think in terms of the high-end 20 watt machines, what would you buy? The Atom Stack or the Xtool D1 or maybe another option? Let me know down in the comments. And speaking of the Atom Stack, we're gonna jump into the review of that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Oh! <laughs>